Good to see you ladies and fellas again. This episode is one of the best adventures I've had, and believe me, I've had a few. We went off-road, then turned off again, to the Carson River track that leads far north into the Kimberley. Ronnie, a traditional owner, took us up through his country in search of a secret fishing hole. I tell you what, we had to work hard to get there, but what a payout. Stick around to see some of the best Australia has to offer, including the Gibb River Road, and some of the trickiest off-roading to get there. Up in these parts, the woolly wagtail is said to communicate with the spirit world, telling the recently departed if the living were speaking ill of them. Their magic is feared. In the Kimberley, there are over 300 species of bird, each with their own story, each with their own magic. Hey fellas, I had a good mate of mine, Ronnie, who's up here giving me a call. Got a few issues with his 60 series, can't get it to start. Do you mind if uh, we shoot around there and take a quick look? Sounds good to me. Yeah, I've got a couple of old mates here in Wyndham, Colin and Ronnie Morgan. Top blokes, I tell you. I've travelled with these guys before and it's had a ball of a time. What's the issue with it? Won't start. Ah, well that's no good. I reckon we'll probably start with looking at that issue first. Yep. Good one, Kenno. Don't know how I'd get along without you. It's been a few years since I've seen Ronnie, so I'm really looking forward to catching up. Must be Ronnie's dick. Hey, so Ronnie! Yeah. Hey, how you going there? Mate, good to I'm see you, mate. Oh, don't worry about that, mate. <laughs> how you doing? Yeah, really good, mate. Really. Keeping well? Yeah, yep, for sure. Yeah, okay, good. Ronnie, Kenno. That's Kenno. Hey, Kenno, Sorry, Ronnie, mate. mate. How you going? Uh, you yeah. mate? I went, to, went, and went hanging out with your dad back in the 70s. Yeah, he was telling me something that yeah. you shared a bed or something like that. Oh, so yeah, I mean, when yeah. He said so, that, something I just like that. Yeah, yeah, well, I don't blame yeah, you. Yeah. It wasn't me then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's wrong with the old girl? Um, just won't start, mate. Well, it's actually it's a HJ61, which is the factory turbo model. No, I think I thought it was the battery, so I changed the battery and stuff like that. Found out it wasn't wasn't a battery. It's actually um, like I think fuel's not getting to the engine or anything like that. It's got fuel going in, but there's something there that's just not kicking that motor over. Mm. Glow plugs getting power. You got a meter? I do. We yeah. might we might chuck a meter on the glow plugs. Yep. Um, power sure to the pump, all that sort of stuff. Other yeah. than that, we're just adding to the confusion. Yeah, that's it. I'll get a cup of tea. Yep. <laughs> they um, both proceeded to comb the three of them. Well, I can see a problem, Glenn, eh? What's that, mate? The windscreen washer bottle's empty. Oh, there's no lid on it. I would have said that myself. Ronnie. Yeah. Sorry. I don't know nothing about either, so I thought a cup of tea with Dad was quite a... because Dad's an old mate of mine. Oh, that was close. And it is burning. It's, yeah. it's burning fuel, yep. Well, initially I thought the problem was uh, fuel. Thoroughly checked that. I did a double check. Then I thought electrical. I reckon I'll take, get you to turn the ignition on. I just want to watch what's happening to the pump. Yep. And then we'll just sort of check these, uh, these connections here, make sure we've got power. What I suspect may be happening, on start, you'll get, the t you'll get your voltage to the pump. When you go back to on, it's got no power. Yeah, yep. So if you crank it on start and it starts, just let it run for a second or two, so that way we know everything's cool. Yeah. Then we can isolate it to power getting to the pump. If that's what it is, that'll be an easy one. Yeah, yep. No. So I was checking that, but it was working. Um, had me stumped. Fuel, electrical, check. Um, yeah, I was a little bit apprehensive whether I could get it running. 
So we got the meter out, we were checking uh, voltages everywhere, we were checking voltages to the heater. Then I saw this, this little uh, vacuum actuator. Try that, can I? Butterfly. Yeah. For the manifold. Butterfly for the manifold. And I saw as soon as you crank it, it would open. But as soon as you let the key go back to on to let it run, it would shut again. OK, so what I say is going on here, Ronnie. Yep. The heater, heater box is probably not working. And it's shutting off the butterfly in the intake. Yeah, yep. So, yeah, so it wasn't getting any in the engine. I pulled the vacuum line off there and she fired straight away. And obviously when it registered there was enough heat, the vacuum stopped. Throw it back on. And it's still running. Yeah, I see, yep. Pull that hose off first thing in the morning. Yeah. Start it, get it warm, put it on. Come try back it. a couple of minutes later, check the vacuum's not there, jam the hose back on, and away you go. But I would be ordering a new heater. So it's all sorted. Yeah, mate. Yeah, mate. Thanks. Running. Thanks for your help, eh? Yeah, yeah well, I've finished my cup of tea. We're hitting the road now. Yeah. As a thank you for getting his car back on the road, Ronnie offered to take us through his country, yeah, north of the Gibb River Road. We organised a place to meet the next day and headed off on the Karunji track. Not before we got a group selfie with a local, though. Selfie time? Yeah. Let me do my hair. Come over this All side. Oh, that side. Come out a little bit more. Come on, that's a little bit. And in the sun, you look as black as I am. Starting in Wyndham, we're taking the Karunji track around the Coburn Ranges, which should offer spectacular views. From there, Ronnie is taking us up north of Home Valley Station, way up into his country by the Carson River Track to try and find a secret fishing hole. If we survive that, then it's onto the Gibb River Road, heading west for us. Hey, Ernie, feels like we're taking one to reunion tour, mate. Yeah, it's like that, isn't it? Catching up with old mates up this part of the world. It's really good fun. Yeah, I've known uh, Colin and Ronnie for four years now, and we were staying in contact, we never knew. Yeah, it was good to meet those fellas, but um, then we're going to go do the Kajani track. Karunji. Oh, Karunji, is it? Karunji. Yeah, no, oh, well, I'm pretty sure I got it right first. It just, it's how you say it, it's how you read it. Once we fixed Ronnie's truck, we headed out of Wyndham. We took a right turn to uh, check the pronunciation here. The Karunji track. It takes you around the Coburn Ranges and it brings you out um, just north of the Pentecost. No, I, we, I haven't done that track. I knew that track was there, because I'd gone out to stations out there. Then we continued on past the station into the unknown. On the flat, though, whoa, bit of fun out there, open space. We kind of like it. There's a certain expectation of the Kimberley, the rugged and, you know, of this, that and the other, but then you realise, yeah, there are flats like that, a lot of them around the place, but you never get to go on them. A lot of the history about Indigenous lifestyle, um, you sort of skim over it in the Australian education system. It's sort of like British colony and, you know, James Cook founded Australia and that was it, you know, and since the foundation in 1901, that's all you need to know, how the, the land was built. A lot of rude things they did, a lot of sad things they did, a lot of massacres and a lot of what they call rid the land of blacks. Prison trees is one of those things that are reminders to me of the so-called crimes that Indigenous people have done against the white fellow. So Ernie, why do they call them a prison tree? Well, there'd be renegade blackfellas who were shooting cattle with spears or doing something wrong that they didn't like, so they'd have to kind of catch them, chain them by the neck, and if they got a few of them, they'll chain them neck to neck, bring them over to a tree like this that's renowned, stick them inside, lock them up while they go and do some... They could be gone a week, they could be gone for two weeks until they come back and then they were taken from here and well, the rest of them over to what was State Shipping Service, Wyndham being the closest from here and then they'll just boat them down to Fremantle. That's horrible. Yeah, if it's, you know, if that was a mentality. I don't know what the government still thinks about it. But in those days, you know, if natives were flora, fauna and natives, so there wasn't real much of a protection against Indigenous. Uh, it's a shame to see that people carve their names in it. It's almost like a form of graffiti, but probably worse because it's a piece of history. 
I saw the prison tree, a lot of flashback came to me of these men chained together. Um, not, not an impressive sight, but a, a stark reminder of what Aboriginal people have endured. Guys, it's a different landscape again, isn't it, eh? Um, it must be beautiful from your end without any dust, isn't it? Bull dust. Mate, look at just ahead of us now. The sun's coming down. There's a few clouds behind it, all those colours coming through. And up against that escarpment on the left-hand side. And all these little boabs, mate. This is magic. We're dry, driving in between it all. That's the Cockburn Ranges, mate. On the other side of that is Gibb River Road and El Questro. Yeah, these ranges are unbelievable. They really do light up in the sun, don't they? Yeah, it's beautiful. It's sort of, you've got the biggest escarpments left and right, and then you've got the open plains in the middle. It's, um, it's definitely worth coming out here for. Oh, definitely, mate. The magnificent Coburn Ranges are part of the Kimberley Plateau. The range gets up to 800 metres high in places and can be seen the whole time you're on the track. This is the kind of stuff I live for, to be able to drive through places like this, places that just take your breath away. It makes you feel very small. And for me, that's saying something. Heading towards the sunset and the bull dust, it was like the horizon was on fire, a blaze. You had to hold up a lot. You don't want to get that stuff into your car. It's not just the air intakes, it gets into bearings. The most awesome thing, you got a beautiful sun setting when you're out in the middle of a floodplain. And did you see this tiny little speck and this billowing wind of cloud burst of dust? I love bulldust, just like going through water, <laughs> splashes off the side. It started getting dark, so we decided to make camp. And when we woke up in the morning, wow, what a beautiful place to camp. We didn't realise that night we'd pulled into such a great spot. I have been driving my 100 series like Kingpin, Land Cruiser, on the hard top, lowering the tyres on the 100 series and just getting amongst that grindy track. Don't tell the boys, I had a lot of fun, even the little crawls and swings and stuff, and rocking, it was awesome. I cannot wait to see that happen series get a bit of lift. Hey, uh, how'd you fell asleep? I slept like a baby. I am. Um... I went into a food coma after that feed and I went and had a hot shower in the van. It was unreal. Next thing it was morning. Well, uh, really good on you, Ken, eh? We had to sit up and tell bedtime stories around the fire. Yeah, we had a dust shower, mate. This terrain's changing a bit here too. What do you got there, mate? Well, right, a bit of a uh, few bumps getting into this bit of a washout. I might low range it for the van. Good idea, Ken, eh? There's not nothing to catch you up. There's a bit of wheel placement, mate. Roger. And it goes all the way through here as well, fellas. This one here might uh, drag the, the back of the van, can I? But the last 10 kilometres, just before the Pentecost, got, got quite interesting. Low range, uh, a lot of washouts. This just means select a slow gear and um, know exactly where you're putting your wheel so you don't cause any damage. Uh, we actually ran into somebody 
I think it was at the prison tree, and he said, oh, there's no way you're going to get that van through there. I wouldn't even try. So that just eggs me on even more. Righto, I've got to do this. And yeah, the track started wearing away, but the van just handled it beautifully. I just don't want to put a van wheel in there. That's what I don't want to do. Oh, just like that. <laughs> yeah, like that. <laughs> Mighty Pentecost, there she is. What do you reckon, fellas, about this track? Slow going? Not difficult, but just technical. Yeah, mate, it's good. Nice technical bits, step ups and step downs to test out the caravan suspension. What about you, Ernie? Mate, that's the first time I've been on that track, and that was a combination of everything. Bit of rock, bit of sand, bit of bulldust, bit of open plains, and just climbing, rock climbing and stuff like this. I'm having a ball. Thank you for bringing me on this. Yeah, mate. You don't have to trash your car. Just take it all nice and easy, eh? That's what I'm finding. There are times that I'm thinking that this, you know, my little town car would be um, well out of its depth. I'd gone on that track thinking, no. Hey, I'll trust him. I'll trust him. But when the big fella says, yeah, why don't you do it? He's be all right. OK. And you just do it. I like the speed of it, that you can just enjoy not only the what you're driving through, but what's around you at the time. I mean, this Coburg Range is off at our left all the time. It's just an awesome sight. I've seen it so many times from the gib, but not this long looking at it for, you know, big drive across from Wyndham. Yeah, that's true, isn't it? You know, you, you're doing a dollar ten down the highway. There's only so much you can take in. You know, we're probably doing 20 kilometres an hour. Take everything in. There's Nipple Hill over there, guys. I didn't even realise at the time that it was the actual end of the range itself. It was just where you were lined up with it that it looked like that. <laughs> of course that's what it looked like to you, Ken I Wouldn't expect anything less, mate. How good is this, eh? This is my favourite kind of off-roading. Ernie surprised me. You know, he was harping on for the first couple of days about his shopping trolley. Oh, I call it his shopping trolley. His baby, he called it. He did really well. He, he trusted everything we were saying because obviously he could see the vehicles and the caravan that we're towing that um, we weren't going to be doing anything stupid. Speaking of stupid. Oh, wait till you see the size of this big fella. You call me the big fella, Ernie. Get a load of him. What are we looking at, gents? Mate, on the right hand side, right next to me, here's a big old fella laying down there. I reckon, Glenn, I reckon you can front in him. <laughs> he looks quite relaxed, doesn't he? I might get out and give him a pat. Dare you. Here we go. Oh, I'll see you there. <laughs> he got straight up and I thought he was gonna charge me. Oh you pussy, you didn't <laughs> get out of the car. I've never got back in the car so quick. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was a little bit uh, more scared of me than I was of him because he just turned around and walked off. I lost a thong too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's walked away. You can get your thong now, mate. I so would have had that bull for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> well, after that little incident, it was time to hit the road again. We were meeting Ronnie at Home Valley Station this morning. Here's a nice little section. We must be getting close to the gib now. Very close, mate. Only one kilometre. There you go, I lifted the left-hand front wheel. How you going there, Ernie? Yeah, mate, having fun here. I just can't believe this. I'm going to go four-wheel driving more often. It's addictive. You coming through yet, Kenno? On my way, mate. Just keep an eye on my van. Kenno may not be many things but I have to admit, he's a master behind that wheel. 
Oh, here's a bit of an angle. I wonder how my rig's gonna go through this. Like first test with the coil springs in the bum. What do you mean? Oh, with all this weight on the back, it doesn't like angles. Geez, that was nice. That was good. Good for the caravan, can I? Yeah, it's just what I was thinking. It leans you back towards that tree too, eh? It does. You want me to guide you? Oh, I should be right, mate. I've got nice big mirrors on this thing. It's good. I'm making my run. I can't really see anything over the bonnet, so I'm just sort of going to drop it in. Oh, and there she goes. Starts dropping. That's what I like about Keno. He's never too worried about anything. Even driving over an edge with a two and a half ton caravan on the back. Okay. Yeah, looking good, mate. This is just what grey nomads do, isn't it? Eh? The crazy ones. <laughs> The Karunji track pops you out right on the Pentecost River, but it might as well have been a puddle when we got there. There was no water in it at all. We've since found out that the last few wet seasons up here have been a bit of a non-event, so it's not surprising that the river is running quite low. Not long after we'd turned onto the Gib, we turned off again towards Home Valley, which is where we'd organised to meet Ronnie. Apparently, there was a concert on at Home Valley last night. Thanks for telling me, fellas. Troy Castadale is a mad fisherman. He's the sort of bloke that'll drop a line in a glass of water. He is an absolute nut when it comes to fishing. So I've not been mates with TCD for years. It was good to see him bit of, um, pick up before we went on our journey. After speaking to Ronnie about what the track ahead had in store for us, we advised Ernie to leave his precious shopping trolley at the station. Yeah, when Ronnie advised Ernie not to take his car, look, I wasn't too surprised, being the, the black top runner that Ernie's 100 series is. Uh, the front suspension had, had sagged quite a bit. My vehicle and Kenno's vehicles and, and the trailer had enough clearance. Right. Let's push it all on the floor and work it out from there. Oh, working that, yeah. <laughs> What do you got for us, Ronnie? Yeah, mate, um, probably a uh, full drive and goal there. I'd like to see how Cano goes with the um, big rig there and, and the caravan. A uh, bit of full driving, but uh, mainly uh, barrel fishing, mate. Hopefully we can catch some. Ah, oh, now you're talking my language, mate. Barrel fishing. I am a excellent fisherman. I'm just not very good at catching fish. I'm just really, really good at trying. Well, mate, everyone I took to this spot all caught something. Bet you can, I doesn't. Often people will say, oh, the track's either this or the track's either that, but you've got to take it all for a grain of salt. You, you don't know until you get there. Ronnie said that I probably shouldn't take the caravan, but if I wanted to, I could. So I took that as a bit of a challenge. Um, I definitely heeded Ronnie's warnings, but I figured the trail is tough enough. I can give it a shot. So I did, but had no idea what I was in for. And that track definitely threw it at me. We literally drove through the gate and we're straight into the action. Hmm, I've got a feeling this is gonna get very interesting. According to Ronnie, the first section of this track is a walk in the park. But he reckons it'll get pretty hairy later on. I really hope Kenno's made the right choice about bringing his home on wheels, because the only vehicle that stands a chance of rescuing him here is mine. Before the community of Umbulgari was forcibly shut down by the government, Ronnie used to live here with his family. It's hard to comprehend that this was the access road to their home. First impressions of the Umbulgari. Um, dusty, as everything is in the Kimberley. Wow, how's this bull dust? Just envelopes you. 
Feels like you're about to be swallowed up. All you can do is try and outrun it. like a bit of a low area Ronnie and looks like it's got a bit of mud on it. What are we in for up here mate? Yeah mate this is a nice little creek only gets wet when the uh, tide is really high and we've we've had um, some really high tides as well so yeah get ready to get down and dirty there mate. Yes this looks muddy and soft. Oh, I hate muddy and soft. Yes mate we know you do. Oh, it's flicking mud everywhere, Ronnie. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Doesn't look like a good spot anywhere to put it in. I'm just going. Come on, Geno. I had to get a bit of angle up, keep a bit of angle up so I didn't drag the drawbar. Good luck, my It's pretty soft and slippery. Oh, you just walked it. <laughs> How did he make that look so easy? Ronnie suggested we stop here and pick up some firewood, as apparently there isn't too much where we're headed, wherever that is. Oh, look, I broke it. It's not gonna burn now, you broke it. Didn't think it was possible to get any blacker, but it is. Hey, Ronnie, these tours that you run out here, mate, what sort of vehicles do people take? And do they get stuck or have any dramas? Yeah, mate, I, um, I had a range of vehicles come out, actually. Like, um, you know, I had a Mitzi come out. You have to have your vehicle, like, a two-inch lift with 33s or, you know, um, 265s, 285s, stuff like that, you know, just to get a bit of ground clearance. Yeah, some of them did pretty, pretty good coming through this area, even a BT-50. Uh, Mazna and stuff like that, you know. So what happens if, you know, um, someone runs into a drama and they break something? Have you had that yet? Yeah, mate, actually I did. Um, at the same major river crossing we're going to go to, um, the Jurek crossing, other side of that, a fellow, um, you know, once in a million, you know, this little butterfly thing on your um, injector pump went on him, couldn't start the car, so we had to tow him down across to this uh, Nulla station where the barge could come in and pick him up and take him back to Wyndham. Sounds like good uh, caravan and country. Have you had anyone bring a caravan through here before? No, not really. Um, like on my tours, I don't recommend anybody bring um, trailers along and, and stuff like that. Well, Ronnie, I can't understand why that would be, mate. Just got bogged in the bull dust, so I've gone in the low range. I'm going to put my centre diff lock in and. Um, See how we go. Okay, mate, I didn't know. There's so much bulldust behind me, I couldn't see ya. Glenn, I've got to reverse out of this one, mate. Yeah, mate, I've gone back to give you a bit more one up room and guide you from here. Something beeping at me. Alright, bring your trail left. Add. Train it up. Oh, that's why you were beeping. The handbrake was on. Righty. Well, I'm going to have to give this one everything I've got. Come on, baby. <laughs> that was soft. <laughs> Ooh, Glenno's not mucking around. I get the feeling he doesn't want to get bogged today. Listen to me roar, Gavin. That thing does roar too. She's a beast. Ernie, are you starting to realise that it might have been a good idea leaving your car back at the station? 
Whoever made that decision is the most fabulous person in the world. Thank you. I want you. <laughs> Mind you, when we finish building your little town car, it'll be it'll be good for tracks like this. Oh, wait till you see what's in front of us. Are we nearly at the caravan park? Just around the corner. Oh, oh this is going to be interesting with the van here. Oh, I tell you, this is going to be very interesting in the van. Tell them the wheels are very slippery. Go. I don't think you're spinning your fronts, Ron. You're not spinning your fronts. Bloody hell. Nope, someone's not in four-wheel drive. Surely you can't have been driving this whole time in two-wheel drive. Oh, hang on again. <laughs> oh, no, we can't go yeah, back. We're going to go nowhere. If one is going to get stuck here, and he's saying that's like a one out of ten, how are we going to do the rest of this track? So we ran up to have a look, and he was right, he was only getting a rear wheel spin. It won't reverse out of there either, eh? No, um, it's just slipping on this side here. Oh, it's spinning, is it? Yeah. Yeah, let's check the fuse. There is no fuse for that four-wheel drive actuator. So we tried to push him up over some rocks. We couldn't quite get him moving, so we jumped underneath to see if we could see a cable had dislodged. Pushed him again, couldn't find any dramas, so we managed to get him out by moving some rocks around. Oh, he's right for work. He's going for it, and I guess that means I'm up next. Can I? I'm gonna switch back. Mate, well, you're gonna nail this. Take it easy, mate. Trail's about to go over a big rock. Whoa, I'm close to that boulder. <laughs> Just me. Good caravan country, this. They asked me to test it. I don't know if they meant this. That's amazing. Well, at least no one can argue with the van's off-road capabilities. And now for the big man. Like everything he does in that 79, I've no doubt Glenno will make it look like a walk in the park. Yep, as suspected. Good on you, mate. The cruiser eats this stuff up. Hello. Before these trees get close to the van, Glenno, how's it going up the front there, Ronnie? It doesn't get any better, mate. Look like you might be collecting a bit more trees with that thing. We can drop off, wash away to the left. And one to the right here as well. Some more bit of loose rocks up here too there, can I? That. What's given me confidence right now is knowing that anything I tackle, Ronnie has just driven in two-wheel drive. Obviously, I'm pulling a lot of weight, but I'm starting to get used to this 200 series. Come on, baby. Bit of scrabbly stuff here, Glenno. Bit of a step up. Whoa, she's shoveling rocks. Oh, come on. How you going, Kenno? I'm going. Oh, come on. Woo-wee! <laughs> right up, I'm coming. I might have shifted a few rocks, Leno. <laughs> that you have, mate. Well, very rocky climb. First gear low range. It's just doing its job. Nice and easy. I don't want to hurt anything. I'll tell you what, those coils in the back make a massive difference. That's it. Rip in. Whoa. We're up.
This is special country and I feel so privileged just being here. Hey, look, it's pretty special when you've been forward driving all day to come up over that ridge and it was, it was pretty special. We all jumped out at the same time where we stopped to capture the, the sunset. Sunset was so relaxing, but not long after that, it was dark and we were into a recovery. Look, Ken O, he came round the corner, it was dark, and I could see him struggling um, up this rocky ascent. I had to reverse him back, I guided him back enough so that I could just squeeze through, get in front of him, and I was going to go up ahead and uh, hook the winch on and just give him that gentle, gentle uh, pull out of the four holes that had been dug. Friggin' hell. The 79 series jumped into the four holes that Kenno had dug with the 200. And they were deep, and it was just four big trenches. And the crew came to help and rebuilt the track. Give that a go, you reckon? Oh, beautiful track building. The process was getting Glenn into a safe position where he could put the winch on and get a straight pull. He wasn't pulling all the weight of my car, I just needed a little bit of assistance, so we didn't need to double back or anything like that. This is not an ideal situation to be in, especially after a long day. Go on, mate, I'll uh, get in position. I'm good to go if you want to take up tension, mate. Yeah. Once I got up over the first section, we just had to move Gleno again and hook on again just to pull me around the corner. Essentially, it was a momentum issue. If I had momentum, I would have been able to, to get up straight away. Beautiful. Good job, thank you, Gleno, and everyone else who was involved. Nothing better than doing this stuff at night time! Yeah, we made camp for the night, and uh, I think it was a good choice. Well, I know it was a good choice of Ronnie's, because he did say to us, that was the easy stuff. You wait until you see what's ahead. This is the 10 out of 10 stuff. me today? Yep. Grrr. Wolfie! Hey, settle down. He doesn't mix well with other dogs. I think he's got a bit of dingo in him too, you know. I think Ernie thinks I'm hilarious. He just doesn't like to show it too often. What do you got for us today, Ronnie? I got a passenger to scare. Well, mate, I think you'll be scared. The first thing up is the mighty Jurek crossing, mate. Um, I lost a shocky here in, my, in a mate's uh, troop carrier, so hopefully we won't lose that big trail of yours. No, I need somewhere to sleep. The famous Jurak Crossing, mate. I just heard you talk about this one so much. Oh, yeah, mate. When I do my tours, this is like the, um, oh, what do you call it, the point of no return. So once you're on the other side, mate, there's no way you're turning back if you break down. So far, Kenno's he's done an amazing job of getting the caravan where it is. Like, it really surprised me. Across the Jurak, I did not think he would get that through there without breaking the vehicle. The van, I thought it would be fine. It's solid. But there's always a tow vehicle that's under so much strain. It started off a bit sandy, a few boulders here and there. Then it just felt like half an hour of boom. Well, guys, welcome to the Mighty Jurek Crossing. Hey, she's a beauty, that's for sure. Thank you for bringing us here. Bit rocky and rolly. Yeah, it's slow going. Yeah, I was thinking about changing the name from Jurek Crossing to Rock and Roll Crossing. 
What do you reckon? Suits. That river crossing, that isn't even a road. They've got boulders in there the size of lounge chairs. Hey, guys, just to let you know, this road we're actually taking is uh, one of the old original roads. Um, before, when we used to cross, it used to be a bit further onto our right there. Um, but, you know, given that we have some big wet weathers up here and, you know, this place is in full war, um, yeah, it just rearranges the countryside. Every, every year we come back through, the, you always have to be putting in a new road somewhere else. How long would it take you to carve a new road, mate? Oh, uh, maybe a day. Yeah, it just depends on where we have to put the cars through. Yeah, it'd be a bit of a mission. I can imagine there'd be a few of you moving boulders around. Wheel placement was so critical. There was diff clangers under there, gearbox clangers, and that's what takes that, that mental energy. Left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator. Eyes just peeled everywhere, knowing where your front wheels are gonna be, where your rear wheels are gonna end up. I cannot believe that this is the road to your old community, Ronnie. Funny thing, when you know, when we have to do any shopping, like uh, before when me and my missus were living out here, I had to go into Kananara, pick up all these furnitures and stuff, brand new furniture, TV, and um, drive them back out here when I had all evil. <laughs> yeah, I'd hate to see what the delivery fee would be out here. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie has the advantage of having driven this crossing countless times before. But it doesn't change the size of the boulders or the fact that he still doesn't have four-wheel drive working. This is dead set amazing. Okay. Concentration. How are you travelling back there, Keno? Good, mate. We had um, one big loud noise up under a side step, I think. We both cringed. There's another one. There's another one. <laughs> Perfect timing. That caravan company doesn't watch this DVD. <laughs> that is the worst track I have ever seen. I look at that and go, no, right, give me a chopper. I'll go over the top of this. Yep. That's a good angle. That's Ooh. a good angle. Oh. 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 Oh, rock slider on the van's doing its job. Holy gee, there's a lawbreaker right there. Yeah, uh, Land Cruiser breaker. <laughs> <laughs> this is absolutely, you, you, this is something you got to see to believe. <laughs> we'll do. Oh, we'll, no, 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 I no. won't ever do this. After getting out the Jurak, it was, there was a few unevens off to the side, um, a lot of up and down. It's, for me, it was just first gear low range everywhere. For the next, it just felt eternity. Rocky, uh, up and down, little hills. It was just slow going. Funniest part is we've got to drive back out the way we come in. This fishing hole better be good. So it turns out I didn't come through that crossing unscathed after all. Quick tyre change and we're on the move again. Ernie and I were driving along, started coming down a little downhill section with a few rocky drop-offs. Next thing we know is noise starts. It's around your axle area on the back, on this side. Axle at the back. We couldn't work out what it was. We weren't on good ground to be able to jump under the car properly and have a good look. Take it down further, we're hopefully to get a bit of dirt. Righto, mate, we'll go down where it's flat. No, that's getting worse, mate. Since Ernie had been in my car, things were going wrong. We got Glenno in, and he thought it might have been the handbrake. It doesn't sound like the wheel. No, I was like... first thinking maybe all the handbrake shoes and everything come to pieces, but it's... Yeah. Feels like it sounds like in the middle of the car, doesn't it? Yeah. So we ripped the wheel off, and it wasn't until we got the wheel out of the way that we could actually get under properly and have a good look underneath. Well, it looks like it's all there. I wonder if the bash plate is hitting on that tail shaft. Glenn turned the, the axle, and I could see up and up above the drive shaft that one of the little plates had lost one of its mounts and and come down and it was just rubbing on, on the top of the drive shaft as it was spinning. I thought it was gonna be a, a center of a diff, something nasty. Fixed! That's a good outcome, mate. First, Ronnie couldn't get four drive. 
Then Kano had some issues with his vehicle in the caravan. Now Ernie's stuck with me. No, I was stuck with Ernie. When I was riding up front with, um, with you, Ronnie, I'm sorry about your front wheel drive. Kano, I'm sorry about the back tyre, and I'm also sorry for that plate. I'm just hoping the big fellas can find some love and I can stay in his car. He, he just had to go. It was trouble from as soon as he got in the passenger door. Don't they go on threes? With threes? Yeah, well, everything goes in threes, right? I've had the three now, so it's going to be a good trip. And on top of that, you can tell your travelling mate in there, Woofy, that next time I catch him, I'm going to bite the little bugger. I have a feeling it's going to be smooth sailing from here on in. Hey, Ronnie, how much food on this fishing hole, mate? I've been hearing about this fishing hole for the last 24 hours. We still haven't made it there yet. Oh, mate, this fishing hole is just over this hill here, mate. Not too far now. I hope it's worth it, mate, because this has been a fair old mission to get to a fishing hole. Oh, yeah, it's one of the uh, top secret spots that everybody knows about. I think the bull's trying to scare us off. Ah, well, we all know bulls don't scare me. It's going straight to my bar. How do I look? Good. Come straight towards me and just about five feet in front of me, 45 over this side here, and we'll get back on the track again. Cross here. Don't listen to him, he's a sabotager. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit doubtful on whether I should hear him. <laughs> All right, swing him now, 45. Where in the hell are we going? Full car length and then turn back over this side. In the middle of the track here. Well, it's starting to look like Ernie thinks he's earned our trust back. Go straight forward, see that little first tree there? Just to the right-hand side of that. Keep going, big one. There's a hole on your right-hand side. Keep coming straight out, full car length. Now turn it up. Straight up there. Mm, that's a bit of a raw bar grabber. All right, we don't have to worry about Keno anymore, so you would be right. <laughs> Got another full car length forward. Now swing it up to your right. Trailer in the hole on the right, left hand side, that's okay. Straight up. Got it. What's wrong with your gear? Mate, well, I got it in Tiptronic and it's um, going down gears by itself. <laughs> You're not getting back in this car. It's been fine since I booted you out. Nulla Homestead was interesting. It was like everyone had packed up and left very quickly because everything was left behind. Some good gear in here. Got the old Rover Rancher right on there. That'd be worth a, worth a bit. The old Land Rover Series 1 or 2. I'd have to have a look at the front. A couple of gen sets. This place is ready to rock and roll. She's set up. I think I might move in. The place is not up and running, but it wouldn't take much to get things running again. To start the generator, the phone's still running. Hey, Mum, it's Kenno. Just letting you know I'm out at Nulla Nulla. Anyway, catch you in a month or two when I get home. See ya. Don't know the story behind it. Probably a very interesting story. I'll probably never know the story behind it, but definitely a lot of facilities there, and someone definitely left in a hurry. Hey, Ronnie, you said this fishing hole was just over that hill, mate. We've gone over the hill. Where are you taking us? It's a shortcut, but bugger if we know where we're going, so we're just driving on following this whole road. Hey, Ernie, since you hopped out of my truck, auto's been fine. <laughs> he blaming me for his auto being fine now. <laughs> no, I'm not blaming you for it being fine. The cause of the issue was you. <laughs> 
Yeah, I know. Mate, guess what? I never get lost in my country. What is he doing to me? I think that was happening with Ernie because Ronnie didn't have the time to actually invite Ernie to his country. So they hadn't been through that ceremony yet. I'm starting to believe in all this Aboriginal spirit stuff. It's kind of uncanny how it works. Look, he knew that the direction we were going. He knew as the crow flies where we had to be, but we were a couple of hundred metres off the track. So he was just going with the nose. Ernie was sitting on the roof, uh, trying to find the track again. I had to sit on the roof because the anthills, they were scattered all through, so, and there the were rock piles here, there and everywhere. I don't think we can call them Aboriginal trackers. Maybe Aboriginal track losers. Yeah, well, you tell me how we're supposed to find a track when the grass is this overgrown. Can't even see three feet ahead of you. Ha! The grass is so thick, it's just holding the van up as it goes over that washout. We'd overcome a few obstacles to get to this fishing hole, and it just seemed like kept getting further and further away. I had problems with my car, Ronnie had problems with his car. God, we're never gonna get to this fishing hole. But then they found the track. Look, I couldn't believe it when we finally got to this water hole in the middle of nowhere. We come across these mud flats and here's a brackish water. Oh yeah, this looks all right. Have a look at this. 20 bucks, Ken I can't catch a fish. What do you reckon, Ken I'm going to go get a rod. <laughs> <laughs> the goal of this whole track was to get to the water hole. And Ken I being such a keen fisherman, I was really excited for him. What do you got there, mate? I'm just going to grab out a couple of lures. This is my barra box. I might go to the popper, I think. Do we have to give you a hand when you Thank fish? Thank you, Glenn. That's how you use it fishing too. Do you want to borrow a lure? No. Okay. Well, but Bar Monday's one of those fishers. That's a good knot. Yeah. <laughs> Ernie and I, geez, we're giving him some rubbish. And his first cast, we're still laughing at him, and he's doing this little jiggy jig thing, and this thing was popping out of the water. <laughs> we're just, this is just a comedy show, mate. Just give up. I thought this was fishing, not comedy. <laughs> What is that doing, can I? It's hilarious. Giving it a few jigs and they're like, oh, as if you're going to catch anything. Next thing, bang! Oh! Crap! <laughs> <laughs> no way! He's on! Can I, you big popper! <laughs> oh, ring him in quick! Before the croc has him. <laughs> Cut! Cut! <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Woo! <laughs> First ever catch on camera, so you can, you know, all those thousands before. I bet it doesn't make the cut, though. But look at that beautiful fish. Right. Look at that. That is a beautiful specimen of barramundi right there. First cast. <laughs> and we were laughing at your bubbles coming so back. So proud of you, Ken, eh? So, 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 so you. sorry, mate. Back away from there. Mwah! You yeah. little beauty. All right, put him back. Don't turn your back to the water. No, this is dinner. And then that's all we heard about for the next 48 hours. First cast, boom, boom, barra. Smashed it. Laughing at my lure. What do you call that? Look, shut up, he's fishing. There was one coming in yeah, there. Yeah, well, he left because you were talking. Oh, no. <laughs> Smash him. We're never going to hear the end of this. No. Even the big fella caught one and broke his rod. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Yeah, but you're not going to like it, mate. Yay! Hang on. Get a photo. I'm sad and happy at the same time. I'm patting him. I'll clean him off for you. Okay. This fishing looks really easy, so I might as well have a crack. Oh! I hooked my first barrel, and it was an awesome one. And it was sort of like, yeah, this is good. And I, I see what all the fuss is about. 17, 1. 
only caught the most fish. I think that's because we let him hold the rod for the longest. Pretty much whoever was holding the rod was gonna get one. That's how it was there that day. Where'd you put it? Put you what? You took it off me and where'd you put it? I don't know what you're talking about. I know what, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, oh nice fish. Who caught these heavy ones? Me. Oh, we had the big fat one that night for dinner. You guys clean, get the veggies and stuff ready. And some fillers for these guys. I need some tomatoes, onions, lemons. Again, young fella come through with his kicking skill. See this on the tail here? Yeah. That's another Barramundi's mouth that's whacked his tail. Can I clean the fish? OK, I'll clean the fish. Look, he just went into his own. He just knew exactly what to do. We just let him run with it, you know? You know, he was like a kid in a candy shop. Are you qualified to do that? Yeah, I'm a qualified fish scalesman. I just want rounds of lemon, rounds of tomato. Oh, OK, right. Just cut them in. Oh, the, <laughs> the <laughs> potatoes are going in the... Getting wrapped up, just going straight in the fire. He's got oh. these recipes and stuff in his head. No, a bit of this, a bit of that. Yeah, okay. We'll just do that. Just chop the onions up, the lemons up, like that. Then. Hey, Ronnie. Yeah, mate. I'm a bit worn out from scaling these, mate. You reckon you could gut that one for me while I do this one? That's the way to go. Leave the head on because the cheek's the best piece of meat. Comes out the guts. Everything comes out together. It's a sense of achievement to know that you've caught all these beautiful fish and Keno's done a wonderful job of, of gutting them and cleaning up. Look, he knows what to do these. Obviously, people have caught fish for him to clean before and uh, put all the stuffing in there and wrapped up in the alfoil. Oh, this can be horrible. Yeah, get some more butter into that one. So all this is just to keep all the meat nice and moist while it cooks in the fire. It'll just steam, steam on the inside and steam the fish. And you can eat it as well. What sort of time frame do you reckon? 45 to an hour. Damn. I'll get my snip. What are you doing, Glenna? You're already into the spuds. Spuds turn out all right? Yep. Just have to test this for a second, mate. Oh, you need a tester? Is it is it done? You all right? It's all right, that's right. I like the way you cook oh, my fish. Oh, look at that. It's just falling off. Yep. But the meat was so clean mm. and so soft. Don't forget to get inside there either. There's onions and tomatoes. Next time I go to the restaurant, they give me a piece of barramundi. Oh yeah, fresh barramundi. You know they like it. Has been at least four hours plus before they put they caught that fish and put it on the table. We're all pretty chuffed with ourselves, and this is this was our reward. I'm not a fisherman, but um, I reckon I could start to like it. You yeah, outdid yourself again, mate. Oh my. Now that we'd had a great feed of barra and a good night's sleep, it was time to head back to Home Valley and hit the gib.
Ronnie ended up with a four drive that works. Thanks to Noah Noah on the way back. There was an old 75 series sheet there. Repco, I need a, a, a freewheeling hub for a 60 series Land Cruiser. Yeah, young fella, we got some. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> uh, when can you have it to me? Mate, yeah, we'll take a shortcut. We'll be there in a couple of hours. Oh, sweet. See you then. Thank you. OK, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. <laughs> and it had a freewheeling hub on it. So we replaced Ronnie's with it. Yeah, that was all together, mate, straight in. Oh, awesome. I mean, bush mechanics, they know what they're doing. I'll go bush with them any time. That four wheel drive again. I thought this time it'd be safer if I stayed out of the cars and just direct traffic. It's always inspiring to listen to Ronnie talk. He has really studied the past of his people in that area. For me personally, I don't like the terminology traditional owner. Ownership to country and stuff like that. Like, and this is just my personal opinion is, like my elders taught me is that we don't own the land, we have to share this country. We belong to this country, look after this country, you know? The knowledge you have been given from this from this country is not yours. You're given this knowledge to pass it on to the right person. And that's how our culture has been surviving for so long. There is a strong sense of spirituality, not only from your like traditional owner tag or from this being your country. There is a, a sense of responsibility mm. from a visual point of view, spiritual point of view, like teaching point of view, yeah, fair mm. enough. But there's a lot of sadness too, any with what mm. you, what goes, what goes around here. Yeah, yep. Especially in the settling days. I mean, this place where we're sitting on now, out looking on the, on the riverbed there, is a um, sad story that happened back in in the 1920s, mid 1920s. Um, they had a big, big massacre a bit further up at a place called Good Good Mary. Now where we, where we were f um, fishing and stuff. One old fella speared another, um, a white man on a horseback for stealing his wife. And um, so he speared him through the, through the gut and stuff. He ended up dying and then there was a big search for that one man. His name was Lunvia, one Aboriginal man. Because he did that, they massacred half of the tribe that belongs in the middle of where we are now to Umbulgari, they massacred them, men, women and children. Some of the ones that they didn't, didn't kill, they got them to go around, get a lot of bo uh, wood, you know, and stuff, start a big fire. And when they had that big fire, they burnt all the bodies and all the ones that got the wood, shot them and put them on as well. He still loves that land, even though there's been some atrocities go on there. It's still part of his life and his heart. It's just all about education. It's like he has a lot of respect for the land. He has a lot of respect for his people. He has a lot of respect for the people that don't know about it. And his job is to educate everybody. That's the best thing about the tours, I reckon. Mm, that, that's, well, you know, we're proud of you with them, mm. what you're doing with the tours. It's... It was this story, all these stories that the tragedy, the culture, the whole lot needs to be told. It needs to be told to the, to the wider Australia, you know? And I, I don't point the finger at anybody, it's history. And I just love, I love teaching whatever I can, whatever my old people will let me share, I'll share it. And we appreciate it, mate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm thankful for people like yourself that come out and like, you know, you, I don't want you to convert nothing, just have an open mind and a better understanding of how our people used to live, still live, for sure. And, yeah. Mm. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you, Ronnie. Nah, no Cheers worries. You, mm. It's been an absolute pleasure. Aboriginals come from here. All the history is in one place. I have so much respect for, for what they went through.
We made it. That yeah, was good. Kenna, you got Thanks a fish. very much, mate. No worries. Right. Appreciate yeah, that. Mate. That was well awesome. Done, that was great. I think we all deserve, dirty. deserve a, very dirty. a warm feed and a cold beer. Let's do it. I'll have a hot cup of tea. <laughs> okay. Cup of tea? Let's do it. I'm going to tow this one out there next time, Roddy. I'm going to tow this one out there next time. Yes, we're at the homestead for dinner. Beautiful meal. <laughs> and um, I think my favourite song came on. No one else was dancing, so I figured, why not have a jig on my way back to the table? <laughs> I think a bit of, um, what's his name, Russell Coit came out. He did the whole song. He did not stop that much that the, one of the young blokes who takes a charter boat fishing decided to join him. And these two blokes doing the Russell Coit, yeah, he's a nutcase, that bloke. So you could say things got a little wild that night, just a little. We're about to hit the gib, guys. We're going to hit the start of the gib again and um, go the whole way. It's time for some corrugations. So is there any special rules in regards to corrugation? Uh, just try and keep out of each other's dust. Obviously, we've already got pressure out of the tyres. Keeping up a bit of speed, like 80 kilometres an hour on every corrugation seems to skip across the top quite nicely. The Gibb River Road is not difficult. There's lots of corrugations, dips, but it's definitely picturesque. Just take it slowly. There are a few well-positioned fuel stops along the Gibb, so you don't normally need to carry extra supplies. But after the Carson River track, Keno is running low. There's track change at all, Keno? You did it a month ago, didn't you? There's less people on it. Mm -hmm. But the conditions haven't really changed much. This road, compared to four years ago, is unreal. The Gibb River Road is a former cattle route that runs for 660 kilometres. The conditions are constantly changing, so you want to come through not long after the grade arrives. There's a lot to see on the Gibb River Road and take the little offshoots to the springs, the stations, because there's so much to see along there. While we were refueling at Mount Barnett Station, I got talking to some blokes who said they just caught some wild horses and were trying to break them in. This I had to see. Lads had um, got a couple of young horses, um, brought them in and um, broken them down. So getting used to the weight of the saddle, getting used to being touched, getting used to being pushed around and taking the, their own control away. So he's already done all the hard work and we just got here at right in the right time to see the easy stuff. Yeah, the muster is breaking those horses. That was awesome because I didn't even know that that sort of thing happened anymore. There's a lot of good riders in the Kimberley, a lot of good stations, but Barnett's have a reputation for um, their horsemanship and working with cattle. How long have you been mustering? Uh, all my life. <laughs> and you like it? Yeah. Well, you must have, but you still need to do it. So it's Pretty, you can get hurt doing that yeah, job? Yeah, hmm. you can. But yeah, you, you, as long as you're reading the horses, yes. how they're, what their nature is, yep. and that comes from experience. Yep. So these young fellas here, down the line, they'll have a few bruises before they get good at it. <laughs> yes. You watch what the older fellas do, and do you ask them questions, or yeah, you just no, gotta I, learn? No, I stop. Old fellas. Yeah. Yeah. Would you break your own in yet? Uh, just start a career and try. So first time you break it? Yeah. And then what? Swing on. Broom, broom cup. <laughs> yeah, broom cup, yeah. <laughs> Melbourne cup, more like it. <laughs> it was unreal to see. It's great to see that it's still happening. I never get sick of the sound of a campfire. There is something so therapeutic about it, so calming, so mesmerising like a bush telly. You know, I always thought this camping thing was supposed to be rough. 
Leno's Cafe serves better coffee than some of the places in the Big Smoke. Alright, we've got all this leftover tomatoes and onions and a bit of ham and whatnot. Anyone like omelette? But this is where it's a nice and easy way to make omelettes without getting the fry pan all dirty and stuff like that. Bit of ham, bit of tomato, lots of onion. In the background here, I've got water just simmering away. A couple of eggs. Zip this up, clip it up. The fun bit, good for the kids. Kids love doing this. So Ken and I love doing this. That perfect size omelette for one person. It doesn't look the best. That's the same ingredients that you would use at home on the pan. But this is where it's different. Simmering water, and I reckon probably seven minutes. All right, boys, come and make your own. Now, if you get too many of these, you might want to get a marking pen. You want to keep that steam in there too. She's cooking away nicely. Going off like a piece of cheese, mate. Well, take that shell out. Yeah, no, that don't taste too good. And then the best part. Looks Breakfast pretty good. in a bag. Yeah. Look at that! Look at the cheese melted in there, eh? Hey. Gee, this That's... is a lovely place to camp, isn't it? Yeah. A few flies, but you get over that pretty quickly. That don't eat much. Nah. Queen's head. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? Very much so. It sticks out like the Queen's head, really. Wow, that is amazing. Never seen that before. I haven't been this far down the gib. Well, there's a much better resemblance from further back. Close up. Hmm. I was looking forward to our next port of call, Tunnel Creek. This is a place of great cultural significance to the local people, Bunabamu. You stay low if you want to. Over the top. Depends how much of a mountain goat you got in you. Look oh, look. Have a look at that, mate. Isn't that awesome? See how long you can tread on the rocks before you have to get your feet wet. Tunnel Creek was awesome. I'm not a big fan of caving. I'm not claustrophobic, but I just don't like the feeling of being in a dark place where if something went wrong, you're in strife. Guys, while we're in here, I just want to tell you a story about a Bunaba man from up the road. His name was Jundamara. He was, um, they call him Pigeon because he had uh, small eyes, but his tribal name was Jundamara. He became an outlaw by defying the authorities. And he used to come, and this was his hideout. He we lived in the middle over here in the cave, so when the police came looking for him, they would come to this end and they couldn't see him in here naturally. And they went to the other end as well and tried to block him in here. And thinking that they had him blocked in here, they didn't realise that there was a hole in the middle where we're going. And he'd escape out over the top and get supplies. There's a place out there called Dingo Gap is where they finally got him put a gun to his head, blew his head off, and then paraded somebody else's head in Derby to prove he was dead. So. Everywhere in Australia's got a story. It's got a tribal story, and it makes everything so very special, but the, the place was beautiful. You come through to an opening and there's just these, um, these bats, absolutely everywhere, up inside, it's like, I don't know, I think it was limestone. Yeah, it was a really, really good spot. I'm glad we went off the track to, uh, to discover it. That trip with those three, including Ronnie, 
were a mixture of everything. I've been to the Kimberley so many times and I've seen it from so many different angles. This particular trip, if you was to um, rate it one out of 10, I'd probably give it a 12. Oh, crap! <laughs> <laughs> no way! He's on! The so mate ship, fixing of vehicles on the run, getting through them, <laughs> laughing, good tucker, good friends, and a bloody good time. And the best thing about it was, there was no schedule. There's so much to talk about. Like spending that time with Ronnie, hearing all, hearing all those stories of his land. Everything we do, it's, it's, there's history there. And from hearing it from the two probably best people in this country to teach us, and Ronnie and Ernie, very blessed. Extremely blessed. Thank you, guys. Oh, I've added a bit of local flora and fauna to the awning up there. Ronnie said if you're going to take any more of his country, he's going to start charging you. <laughs> There's movement down there. i got movement. Glenno's friendly mobile brake repaired. Yeah, I reckon you're wearing the best colour to be near this. That won't aggravate him at all. Can I watch this stuff? Uh, yeah, that's butter. Nuzzlex light. Yeah, mate. Did you buy this? No, I didn't buy it. It just ended up in my fridge. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. No clean now. <laughs> look at that. Can't believe the mouths of these things, look. Yeah. Inhaled my fist. Oh, no. Oh, just pick me nose with that grass, eh? Oh, fabulous. It'll work well. It will? Yep, perfect. Brand new. Oh, yeah. Get that in there. Yes. Trying not to sound like a sexual predator. Gonna... Oh, yeah. Get that in there, Glenna. Then the other four letter word that. Hang on a sec. On the Oregonji track. Or... Where is it? Ora. Ombagari. Ombagari, that's the one. And that's Phil. Didn't really care. Oh, yeah. I didn't. I'm not a fisherman, I couldn't give a <laughs> Yep, it's a fish. Oh yeah. Oh, 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 oh that's a beauty, that's, that's a meter. Bigger, eh? That is a monster. That is a meter. <laughs> Nostril hairs have been put in position. Oh, Ernie, how would you like your... Oh, I did put cheese in! No, oh, you, that's you yours. Know, you don't like cheese in yours. <laughs> I do. What you do, you normally just cook that a little bit first and then you put cheese in afterwards. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Scrape me bum a few times, but that's okay. You do that anyway. Yeah. Mirror's in. Look at this, mate. I've got an Easter egg for you and it's not even Easter. Can I? <laughs> Dingo in your tail, mate. Yeah, you should have heard Wolfie. He had a bit of a go at him. You stay on your side, and I'll stay on my side. Oh, hitting the nuts with that. Little pebbles coming up and flicking me in the nuts. Ready? Ready? What am I doing? Oh, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, you were meant to say something about. Is that your road rage stick, Ernie? Yeah, me road rage stick. I'm going to put it under the seat of my car. <laughs> Sitting in the middle of the Jurak River. <laughs> Is that how you always walk, work on your car? Yeah. <laughs> DVD Bogey Awards. Low range. You have won your own low range lever. Yeah, winner. Winner of the DVD Bogey Awards. <laughs> I need some advice here, can I? Uh, yeah, pedal on the right. 
<laughs> well, that minty was unreal. Oh, I see the problem. These flash spotlights on the front. I reckon we take them off, put them on my truck. That's probably what's making it not start. Yeah. Where do we start? Oh, we just undo this bolt here. You think I can't fish, mate? I've got no idea. No idea at all. They don't even try and fish themselves. Uh, rolling on three, audition take three. <laughs> a little further, and Glenn, turn to your right. <laughs> Good, now oh. 